This is a uh, Halocrafters S38. It's uh, the very first version of the S38. It has the metal cabinet, very smooth, and the metal bottom. The uh, second version of the S38 has a, a wrinkle finish on it, that's how you can tell. And it also has a fiber board bottom rather than metal. Uh, there are a lot of videos uh, about the S38 on YouTube, so I'm not going to just do a regular demo here. Uh, I'll just keep this one short and basically mention a couple things that you should be aware of if you have one of these radios and plan to restore it, and if, particularly if you're not familiar with it. The first thing to know about this radio is that it's potentially dangerous to work on because it has a metal cabinet and it's an AC-DC radio, not powered through a transformer. And the chassis is hot, or can be, uh, depending on how you have the plug in. And uh, so the first thing is when you're working on this radio, always use an isolation transformer. This is one back here. And uh, I have a, a variable transformer here where I can vary the voltage plugged into this isolation transformer. I can also uh, monitor the amperage draw and the uh, voltage up here as the radio plays. Aggression in you. And it's been a tremendous strength so far and perhaps never larger than this. So, <clears throat> when you have the chassis uh, out of the uh, radio, uh, the first thing you can do, of course, is check those uh, rubber insulating grommets and replace those if they're bad. On this one, um, I not only put in new grommets, but I added some additional uh, insulation between the chassis and the uh, cabinet. When I reassembled it, I used some little strips of um, gasket material, but you could use uh, strips of rubber or, or uh, plastic, uh, anything that's, that would insulate, provide further insulation. Because even after you restore the radio, put it back into the cabinet, uh, if there happens to be a connection between the chassis and the uh, uh, cabinet, you could get a uh, nasty shock. The other thing that I did was to install a polarized uh, plug. Um, I didn't install a three-way plug, uh, just a two-way, but it is polarized and I wired it so that the hot side goes through the on-off switch. So the radio, um, the hot side is not still on if the radio is left plugged in and uh, uh, when it's turned off. The um, other thing about uh, restoring this radio is uh, once you get it, uh, the capacitors replaced and uh, any out of tolerance resistors, uh, it's probably going to need to be aligned. And uh, you will need to have a copy of the alignment instructions. This, uh, you can buy these on eBay and it's got uh, the uh, operating instructions as well as the uh, uh, schematic and alignment instructions. And these are the alignment instructions in the back and uh, the uh, steps are to first uh, adjust the uh, peak the IFs and that's fairly simple to do. There's also a uh, the next step is to adjust your BFO and then for aligning the bands, you start with the highest band first, which is band four, and uh, work down to the broadcast band, which you do last. Now, they tell you in these instructions to use a uh, RMA standard dummy antenna. And I don't know if that's really necessary. I'm not an expert at all, but... Um, you can Google what that is, and there are schematics. And I went ahead and just built one, uh, just for the heck of it, to use it. And uh, you've got a uh, 20 uh, UH uh, inductor here, or choke. And 
you're supposed to have a 200 uh, PF uh, capacitor, and the closest I had was a 220, and then a, uh, a, a 400, uh, which you can't find, but I used a 470. Hopefully that's close enough. And then a 400 ohm resistor in parallel with this inductor. And then you hook your signal generator to this side and the radio uh, to this side. And so I use that to align the bands. And it's uh, tracking fairly well. It was off quite a bit after I restored the radio because the um, original tuning capacitor on this thing uh, worked fine until you got down to about 600 uh, megahertz, I mean uh, kilocycles, kilohertz on the broadcast band and then the plates were shorted out and that was true of every band about the last quarter of the uh, tuning capacitor was uh, shorted and I tried to uh, straighten the plates and actually ended up making it worse and it wouldn't receive at all when I got done so I ended up buying a junker and taking the uh, tuning capacitor out of the junker and uh, swapping it for the bad one in here. And now it's uh, working pretty good. Row to eight five eight five zero. Ask about the Bosley. When you tune this, you know, you have a uh, band spread, so you can kind of uh, just bring into, uh, tune into the uh, band and then use this for fine tuning. So that's the uh, brief uh, introduction to the uh, H uh, or the uh, S38 and a couple tips about working on it. Um, just remember that uh, you've got to keep the cabinet and the chassis uh, isolated from each other to avoid potentially dangerous shock. And when you work on it, use a isolation transformer.